let's talk about the world's best streamer. Hey, welcome back to the thrift shop. Today, I've got something super, super special. And all of you 10 people have asked for this. So I'm going to talk about how this streamer sounds. And before you go away, it's Raspberry Pi, it's DIY. If you don't like it, just watch. You might be interested in this, all right? It may be hard. It may be DIY, but I promise this is amazing. Hey, world's best streamer. Here it is. Heck you, Silicon. Yeah, so I'm not going to say this is actually the world's best streamer because the guy who designed, designs this uh, company name, Ian Canada, you can find it at Audiophonics and you can find it direct from sale from him. And uh, just type in Ian Canada and, and you'll find this stuff. This is the Transport Pi Digi on top. And Ian Canada makes a lot of higher end stuff. So that's why I'm saying it's not the best. There's a lot of stuff he makes. So this is my first foray and I am absolutely blown away. And yeah, this thing lights up like a Christmas tree. And it has, I believe it's called the UC Pi Conditioner. So... Super capacitors here. I did a uh, putting this video together, uh, putting this thing together. So you can do a lot of this. You can output power this way directly, on off switch. Um, so this is cool. Yeah, it takes you like two hours maybe to charge the super capacitors. I, you know, maybe it didn't take that long, but I put it on before I used it. So yeah, it's really cool. So putting together the video, I mean, literally in five, 10 minutes, you have this thing together. Already had Volumio installed. You can use whatever you want, mood, whatever. That's just what I already had installed in the Raspberry Pi. Just stuck here in the middle. So, yeah, again, no issues putting it together. Started right up. And I told you in a previous video when I did the assembly that I was putting in these Christex. Gonna uh, be hard to see right there. But soldering them to this you can see some of my burn marks from that very little capacitor that goes between two and three there so hey if anybody can solder these up for me the pins aren't a problem it is the little capacitors they're like the smallest ones you can get in the world i'm just not set up to do that and uh hey I'd love to get these Chris decks that way. I could do a Chris deck to AccuSilicon uh, back and forth. But yeah, so uh, just so you know, it does come um, with these uh, XO clocks uh, for me in Canada. And I'll talk a little bit more about these. But I am using the AccuSilicons right here. So what you see here and why did it take me so long? First of all, I'm so enamored with the sound quality of this that I already had ripped a lot of CDs, but I wanted to get more CDs and I wanted to do my entire collection. And I actually crashed my system because I had so much, so many songs uh, ripped. So now I'm looking to a new NAS and all that kind of stuff. But another story, another problem. But I'm a vinyl lover. And what this thing has done is absolutely blown my mind. And this is gonna go back to a saying. I did a review of a Bifrost OG-1, not Bifrost 2, multi-bit OG-1. I was using the um, a different DAC, outputting coax and optical to other devices. I said, you know, you could switch back and forth, and I couldn't hear the sound difference. And then the bell rung, right? Whatever's doing the USB transition, whatever's getting reclocked is the problem. So I wanted to find a reclocker to really see how that OG Bifrost sounded. And I had the Bifrost 264, which is right here. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So confirmed, you know, you can't go get a cheap, you know, topping and output, you know, just the optical or the coax out in your system and then branch that off because you're getting the sound of that topping. It's doing the reclocking from the USB and all that stuff. And you're losing a lot of performance and you need a higher end system. This just happens to be a streamer with a reclocker. 
And yes, I'm going to build more of these. Yes, I'm going to use more, more different configurations and decks and all that stuff. But this is just for a streamer. I wanted to get my hands wet into how does this work? How's the sound for? I invested a lot of money. There are others that, that have done, you know, fabulous jobs with decks and enclosures. But for me, I just had to find somewhere to start. Um, all right, let's talk about where I was going with this. So I was building a case for it. I was trying to go the smart way. And one of the reasons that this took so long, uh, this is a mini ITX computer case. And I love it because it's got a SATA drive uh, right in the top here. Where I'd have everything put in. I would have this nice box on off button. And this would have been the back. This would have been the front. You see, I had to do some modifications to get there. Would have had this nice screen just in the front. And well, I got the screen working, got the peppy meters working after about, I don't know, maybe one or two weeks of trying everything in the world to get it to work. Um, so yeah, and this doesn't connect right to the back of this because of the board dimensions and stuff. So the connections were difficult. It's really a pain. So this is really, really a DIY project if you're going this far. And, you know, this has really nice anodized side. I mean, this is going to be a really cool project. All red aluminum top, everything. Yeah, epic failure. So I lost $47 on this, but who knows? So that's where I was going with this. Sorry it took so long, but things don't always work out as planned. All right. So this unit has multiple outputs and that was one of the beauties that uh, I, I really wanted this kind of future proof. Um, so you've got uh, coax, Toslink, and I squared S. I don't have any DACs right now with I squared S to test this. So all my comparisons are Toslink and, uh, and coax. And uh, yeah, so let's get talking about it. How's this thing sound? Well, I've already given away, it's blown, it's blown me away. Um, I like vinyl. I've invested a lot of money in vinyl, not just the vinyl itself, my system. And I just absolutely love it. You know, people say this or that or pops and clicks or whatever. It doesn't matter. That kind of goes away when, when you have a high end system. And this has changed my mind about digital. Um, I would say that the sound, it is like going from cassette tape to CD. So if you're already streaming from your Raspberry Pi and you pop this on top and then I'll put it I think you're going to be blown absolutely away um, You don't have to get both boards by the way. You can just get the, the transport Pi although I think this uh, UC conditioner is really really beneficial the sound quality right now I'm just using a standard cable running right to um, a Hub essentially so I'm not even using a high-end uh, Linear power supply with this because you got the super capacitors in here um, So that's not needed but literally, it is like going from a cassette tape to a CD. That's the difference. You don't realize how USB or streaming from a Lumio, Lumio from Raspberry Pi is not that clear until you pop this in. Now, the outputs, um, I feel, at least on the, the, the Bifrost 264, um, they're unison USB. These outputs are, you know, a little bit hotter. So I really can't A, B, um, you know, directly, um, but they're just a little bit hotter. So take that in mind, but the clarity is amazing. And I've been listening to Fear Inoculum um, by Tool um, just because I've listened to that so many times on vinyl. And it's such an amazing uh, vinyl album, how they uh, mastered it and listen to digital. I can get a sense of how good it is compared to the vinyl that I love. And what you can hear with this is mind blowing. And even if you don't like Tool, just listen to the details in there and how it was recorded. Probably some of the best recorded music I've ever heard from a detail standpoint. And um, this thing is just amazing. So the clarity is just, the details are just absolutely amazing. I, I never thought I could get that from digital. And I would consider, um, you know, the Bifrost Unison USB input pretty darn good in comparison to XMOS. And that's one of the things that I want to test with this is that XMOS is not that good. Um, you know, 
the uh, Skiit products are really, really good. And this is just outstanding at what it can do. The soundstage is bigger than I have with vinyl. And I run the iFi iPhone 02 and uh, um, uh, Musical Fidelity M3SI. That's where most of this is done on a two channel rig. Um, although I have been listening through the Singer SA1, which is a very clean, neutral, just slightly warmish amp. Amazing amount of detail from that. I've been running the uh, Dark Voice over here and absolutely love it. Details come through on that too. Um, I'm running a, a Pisvane um, CV181 and a 7236 uh, power tube in that. Details, um, it's just euphonic over here, super detailed over there, and absolutely love it. But the soundstage is just wide, layering separation, um, equal to, better than vinyl. Um, I just cannot say enough. This has totally, totally changed my mind about digital. Um, the amazing thing is I was doing an A-B comparison between the Bifrost 264 and the Bifrost OG-1. And this made the Bifrost OG-1, I would actually say, say sound a little bit better. Um, this can, the 264 can be a little bit bright at times. And the uh, OG Bifrost 1, is got a little more lower end and uh, closely, more closely resembles my vinyl. So I can tell you this will upgrade your DAC. So if you have an older DAC, uh, put this in front of it. You don't need to upgrade your DAC. You need to upgrade how you're getting the bits into your system. And that is the key. This reclocking is amazing. Now I do have to say that running these clocks it came with, um, SoundStage is great, detail is great. Everything is, is fine. I was getting a lot of dropouts. And I was changing a lot of things, trying to see if it is. As soon as I went to AccuSilicon, my dropouts went out. Uh, and you're talking a bit here and there. So it's a very fast, very sharp uh, dropout of music. Um, it's not like a, a second or half a second. It's just a microsecond of, of a dropout. And uh, so, yeah, you know, this gets you up and running. But you definitely go get AccuSilicon. And anyone help me out with the Chris Dex, greatly appreciated it. Um, you know, the downsides of this is, yeah, it's Volumio. I'm not going to sit here and complain about Volumio. Um, you know, I, I'm a superstar, whatever now, the premium, because multiple systems, multiple that, you know, I have three Raspberry Pis in my house. And uh, so this is a very easy upgrade for me. For someone coming in, getting into that system could be hard. You know, I use my phone to go in, even though I got the touch screen, which is not really that reactive and it's kind of hard. Um, yeah, this is just kind of, in comparison to other streaming services, kind of a pain in the butt. Now, if this worked with Amazon Music, you know, I know it works with Rune or it works with Cobas and Tidal and, you know, all this stuff, but, um, or you can go with Ropey, I guess, for Rune. Um, make your, maybe I go to, I need to go that direction. Yeah, Volumio just kind of lets me down. I'm on my phone, I connect to it, and I want to change a song, and then I have to read you know, get out of it and go back into it and restart it and then search by title this all through a, a NAS. It's kind of a pain, right? And it's, from a streaming service standpoint, it's just not the best. Um, so yeah, absolutely love it. The downsides again, it's DIY. My biggest complaint in this arena is, you know, there's no chassis, there's no case, there's nothing. And I know Ian Canada has a lot of things, I think he needs to tie up with somebody, you know, look at Orchard Audio. They make the deck cards and they make the full cases. You can buy, you know, for $700 or $200, you know, you can piece it out, but you don't have to buy the case if you don't want to, and you can. And I think for a lot of people, the drawback is that there are no cases out there. And I think back to, you know, the Class D amplifiers, um, you know, the ICE amplifiers when they came out and, and others that, they didn't have a pathway, right? You buy the module, but what do you do? Well, Gantt Audio from China came in, made a whole kit, right? Give you all the wiring, everything. You plug it in. You got a nice black box, silver box, whatever you want. You put it all together and you have a finished product. In this case, you have half of a product. And I don't know how long this will last sitting out in the dust. And yeah, you can probably do some kind of plexiglass enclosure, but... The people are investing the money. I mean, if you start investing the money into these, I think, don't get me wrong, 150, 175 for, you know, each of these boards, somewhere right around there. So 
you know, you're looking at a pretty hefty investment. And then if you start getting DACs on top of there, it's another, you know, $150, $200, you know, your DAC card, then your output card, you know, it, it adds up to being $500, $600. And you have investment with no case. And I know there are others out there and Gapster, you're, you're great with what you do and, you know, wood cases and all that kind of stuff. And I think for the DIY image, I think the community somewhere needs to come together make cases that you can pop these in, have multiple holes in the bottom, um, you know, have all the through connections to connect this in. Cause it's not easy when you have these, this type of uh, larger bottom board to, to get something to work. So only downside, um, but for the sound quality, I will live with what I got for right now. So, hey, all I ask is you hit like, subscribe, and you know, add a comment, you know, um, help the channel out, I'm trying to grow. I'm doing this for you, I'm doing this for me. It's a hobby. It's fun, but it would be nice to get more subscribers. So I greatly appreciate it. Take care from the thrift shop and see you later.